My career as an entrepreneur started at 10 years old. 10 years old in Germany uh, when I had the desire, I wanted to buy this uh, new Super Nintendo that was coming out. We're living in a refugee camp. My mother doesn't have any money. My father, parents go through a divorce. We have no money to buy the Super Nintendo, but I really want it, right? So I go to the local pool. They had this beautiful pool in Erlangen, Germany. Phenomenal pool in Erlangen, Germany. And I go over there, and I'm trying to figure out a way to make 249 marks to buy the Super Nintendo, right? So I go to the pool, and I go to the owner, and I said, look, I notice everywhere, everywhere I look at, there's beers everywhere. I said, look, what do you do with all these beers all over the place? He says, well, I have to hire somebody to go and clean up how much you pay the guy. I'm 10 years old. So I told him, I said, how much will you give me if I clean up every single one of them? How much will you give me per each that I bring to you? He said, five fennec per beer bottle. Five fennec is like five pennies per beer bottle. Well, I did the math, and I said, how much do I need? I need around 5,000 fennec, which means 1,000 beer bottles to me roughly equals me getting myself, you know, this, uh, 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 what do you call it, this uh, Super Nintendo that I want to buy. So whatever the number was, I think it was... Uh, 500, uh, uh, 2,500 beer bottles, yeah, 5,000 beer bottles that I collect gets me this uh, uh, Super Nintendo that I want to buy. He said, sure. Well, I started doing it. I would come through, collect and put it in a box, put it over here, boom, six marks in one day, eight marks in one day, 12 marks in one day, 10 marks in one day. Next thing you know, the entire pool knew me as the 10-year-old skinny Middle Eastern kid that collects beer bottles. And everyone would say, hey, Patrick, hey, Patrick, hey, he gets, hey, he gets. And I started, they thought I was an employee at 10 years old, and eventually I'm at my 300 marks, and I went to Kaufab, and I bought my Super Nintendo. So how are you taken serious as an entrepreneur, as a young entrepreneur? Well, first things first. If you come to me as a young entrepreneur, you find a solution to a problem, I'm interested. Okay, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you find me a solution to a problem, I'm interested. Solution to a problem. Number two, no more than anybody else does. Listen, look at Kobe Bryant as an entrepreneur, Okay. Kobe Bryant as an entrepreneur, he is a basketball player. His product is him. He plays basketball. He gets paid a $100 million contract at 20 years old, at 18 years old, $3 million contract, $10 million, whatever the number is. Why? Because he knows more about the game than everybody else his age. So people pay for him. In your business, if you're real estate, insurance, financial services, technology, so whatever it is, no more than anybody else in your marketplace because you absolutely immerse yourself into the subject that you're selling and no more than anybody else, everybody listens to you. It doesn't matter how old you are because you know a lot about that specific subject. Next point, start at the bottom and get dirty. Look, I, there, there's a certain thing that if you want to be taken serious, I like back in the days when people worked for a company, everybody started off selling and then they came to the top, right? And everybody kind of knew how to sell because then you know how to connect with every single position where someone says, well, you don't know what it is to be a salesman. What are you talking about? I sold for seven years. Well, you don't know what it is to do. What are you talking about? We came, I came from the bottom to the top. There is something special about a person, a young person, a young entrepreneur willing to get their hands dirty and learning. When I started uh, uh, working at uh, 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 one of the jobs, it was at Valley Total Fitness, and they sent me to sell memberships at a mall in Fox Hills Mall, Culver City. And I went out there, and I'm selling memberships to people in the mall that are walking by 36-month contract. Well, I went, I got my hands dirty, came up, I became rookie deer, we won triple crown, got a big club, became a manager, and then boom, good stuff started happening for me. I took that same principle everywhere. So be willing to start at the bottom and work your way up. Next one, have a good reputation. Have a good reputation. What do I mean by that? Nowadays on Facebook, if you have a Facebook picture with a beer bong, you no know one's going to take you serious. The other day, somebody sent me a message, literally. I wish I could show this picture, picture to you. Send me a message. Hey, I'd like to work for you. Okay? I'd like to work for you. Great. We're always looking for people to hire. I'd like to work for you. I'll travel from New York, and I'll come and work for you for free for six months. I just want to learn from you. I looked at his profile picture. It's him sleeping with his head on his, knocked out. That's, that you, you're marketing yourself as somebody lazy. Have a good reputation. People nowadays that do business with you, they look at, look at your LinkedIn, they look at your Facebook, they look at your Twitter, they look at everything about you. you got to have a clean reputation uh, if you want to be taken serious as an entrepreneur because other people, how are other people going to say things about you? If I call somebody you've done business with, and if you don't give me references, that's a red flag right off the bat. If I hire somebody that wants to do business with me or they want to sell me the product and service and they're not willing to give me reference to call on somebody, 
I don't necessarily take you that serious because there's probably a reason why you are not willing to give me any kind of a reference. Nate, next, make money. If you're, if you're 19 years old and you're making 130 per year, people automatically want to know how you're making 130 per year, period. If you're 21 years old, making 290 per year, people want to listen to you. Now, someone will say, 290 per year, what are you talking Who makes that kind of money? Many young entrepreneurs. How can they make that kind of money? They outwork you. They know more. They want more. They're more competitive than you. Simple as that. Well, that's not fair, Patrick. It's not all about hard work. It has a lot to do with hard work, research, diligence, immerse. But making more money gets other people to take you serious when you yourself are making more money. Next one, have a real opinion backed up by some fact. So if I'm having a conversation, I sat down with a kid the other day. I call him a kid, but he's not a kid. 22-year-old uh, 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 kid that comes to my office, and he's sitting there wanting to sell me commercial real estate. He may be watching this if it's you. And he starts talking to me, and I said, you're very comfortable in your own skin. Uh, tell me a little bit about your parents. And he starts talking about his mom. I said, tell me about your father. And he talks about his father. And I said, you're in commercial real estate. I am. I said, I want to know what are some things your father taught you. Well, my dad taught me about hard work, and from being born to 12, I was my mama's boy. From 12 on, I was just so curious. I wanted to be around my dad because I wanted to learn from my dad, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, you know, what would you learn from sales? I'm a new commercial lawyer, et cetera. So from talking to him, and I asked him opinions about capitalism, and I asked him uh, opinions about economics, he had an opinion. And I sat there, and I said, he's a 21, 22-year-old kid. I would do business with him. He reminds me of me when I was first getting started, and I have an opinion about something that's validated by facts, not just some general thing. I have an opinion because I watch something on CNN, MSNBC, or Fox. A real sense of opinion. People respect when someone has a real opinion about certain facts. Next one, ask for responsibility. I just love where people ask for responsibility. You know, you, you work at a place, hey, what do you want me to do? What do you need from me? Tell me, how can I help you? I was working with this lady who she was my uh, superior, she was my manager, my boss for seven years. And every time I would work, I would say, hey, is there anything I can help you with? What else do you need help from? How can I help you? How can I do anything? What can I do with you? What can I do with this? It was always, I want more responsibility. I want more responsibility. What kind of responsibility can you give me? I want more. I want more. Because that puts me in positions, the more responsibilities I take and the more I'm delivering on my responsibility, it's not just taking it and not delivering, it's delivering on the responsibilities you take, then people start taking you more serious on who you are. Next, deliver and keep your word. Look, I cannot tell you, I cannot tell you how much value there is. We give a lot of credit to people that have great credit scores. 800 credit scores will give you a million dollar loan here to go buy a house. We'll give you a $70,000 loan here to go buy that car. As important as your FICA score is, there is a credit score I pay attention to more than your FICA score. If I got some people that are working here with me as my team or leaders I'm mentoring and I ask them for something, what can I count on you? I can do X, Y, Z. They don't do it, I don't value their word because their credit score with their word is not that high with me. So whatever they say the next time, I take 50% of it because I don't trust their word anymore. So here's a CEO entrepreneur that no longer trusts the word of somebody that says what they're gonna do. If you wanna be taken serious as a young entrepreneur, Make commitments, keep commitments. Let your word be so powerful that even though you're 19 years old, I know you're going to deliver uh, uh, when I give you a challenge on something to do. Next, dress sharp. You know, a lot of times nowadays people say, well, Steve Jobs didn't dress sharp and Mark Zuckerberg didn't dress sharp, et cetera, et cetera. Fine. If you're producing software and you're behind the scenes and nobody sees you, you don't have to be dressed sharp. I get it. But if you come and meet with somebody else, it generally helps to be dressed sharp than somebody that's not dressed sharp. You got to know how to put it together yourself with clothes. It doesn't cost a lot of money nowadays to put it together. I remember when I first got started, my goodness, I bought so much stuff from Goodwill. And Goodwill is secondhand suits and jackets. I don't come from a family of money. So it was Goodwill. It was DSW shoes on sale, on sale, on sale. It was $9 ties from Ross. It was three $9 white shirts from Ross. And it was a jacket that was ripped here. I couldn't go like this because people could tell it was a whole thing ripped. I couldn't pay the guy 60 bucks to fix both sides. Ripped like this, high water because the jacket was a smaller and I'm 6'5". And everybody would see this, so I had to talk like this. But I made sure I got that because I wanted to make sure people took me serious as a 21, 22-year-old entrepreneur. Next one, listen. Listen. Listen to people who have had success that are giving you feedback. Listen to them. 
Listen to what they're telling you. Take counsel from people that have what you don't have. Lifestyle, listen to it. People realize you, there's a certain level of wisdom that a young person has who is willing to listen to counsel from somebody that has already been someplace they haven't been. I'm not talking about taking everyone's advice. If someone's been married 30 plus years and has three good kids and they themselves would perform at a high level in their personal life and they became very successful, so they have good marriage, good kids, good family life, good financial life, successful life, you probably want to take some counsel from them. If somebody's in a business that you're a part of and they've made certain income and they've done it at a level the proper way and you can learn from them, listen. It's probably good counsel you want to take from them. 11. Be the first to show up, last to leave. Quite frankly, if you don't have any kids, you're an 18 year old kid, you're 19 years old, you're 20 years old, what else do you have to do unless showing up early and leaving late? What are you going to do? Go home and do what? Go to a party, go to a club, go smoke hookah? For what? You want to you just be a small time person or you want to be somebody that's going to perform? If you want to be someone that's going to perform at a high level, show up very early, stay very late. Let people know you're out there hustling because you're the first to uh, arrive, last to leave. Act years above, uh, uh, beyond your years, meaning act beyond your years. What do I mean by that? You know, think about if you're 21, how does a 31-year-old act like who's already where you want to be? Walk, talk, think like that person. How does that person that's already there you want to be? So I would sit there and I would say, okay, Pat, you're 22 years old right now. Yes. How is a 30-year-old 30 version, 30 -year -old version of Patrick Bay David going to be? And I would walk like that Patrick Bay David. I would want to think like that Patrick Bay David. How would he speak? How would he talk? How would he do this? How would he close? How would he be? How nervous would he be? And I would try to put myself as an eight-year-old advance, Patrick Bed David, and then perform and come from that place uh, yourself. Next, surround yourself with people that are way ahead of you. That's pretty simple. Listen, I've always had people that are much smarter than me, much wiser than me, you know, better uh, lifestyle than me, way ahead of me in life. They're giving me counsel. People that are absolutely way, way, way ahead of me in any area of my life that I specifically want because I learn from them and they push me and they challenge me to constantly get better. Another one is avoid drugs. It's pretty simple. I am definitely not a fan of drugs. I know there's a lot of things people read where this person said LSD and that person said, you know, this drug and that person said this. You know, whoever that person is that said it, they have no clue what the hell they're talking about. I'm not a fan of drugs. I've seen too many of my good friends. I had one very, very good friend who was sharper than any one of us. He started off with pot, then he went on Special K, LSD, Coke, you know, heroin, you go every single thing, Vicodin, Xanax, everything, and eventually it's the pills that ends up killing you. One of the hardest drugs to get off of nowadays isn't heroin, it's Vicodin, it's Xanax, it's those pills that put you to sleep and you don't feel anything. So I just don't recommend any drugs. I hired a person one time that worked for me, and she came to work the first day. The second time she came to work, I pulled her aside and I said, hey, are you okay? And she said, what do you mean? I said, just look at me in my eyes. Are you okay? And I've been around drugs. You know, people have had problems with that. So I said, you sure you're okay? And she says, uh, yeah, 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 I'm okay. I said, look at me. I've been around. What's up? And uh, next thing you know, she gets embarrassed and she leaves. Anyways, she leaves. Year later, she calls me, comes and meets with me, cries, breaks down, and tells me. While I was working with you, I was taking pills. And she would come to work and all these symptoms that I would study. I, I, no one's going to hire and maintain somebody like that in life. You've got to drop the drugs. So why am I talking about drugs? It's a very common thing with kids nowadays too. And it's always been the case. Pot, X, I'm rolling, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. If you have any plans of doing anything big, why would you add other things in your life that slows you down? There is no reason for doing that. I don't drink coffee because coffee... You know, uh, you know, people get connected to coffee. I don't need coffee. I exercise to get my energy. I don't need to drink coffee. Now, some people do, and some people do that. I'm not a fan of it. I'm simply giving you my opinions on what it is to be taken serious as a young entrepreneur. Avoid drugs. Avoid any of that stuff. And eventually, people will notice you advancing in life, and your brain's going to be functioning from a good place. You're not going to mess yourself up. And you're not going to make any of those big mistakes in life that really set you back. And all of a sudden, you notice everyone around you wants to do business with you. You're making good income, you're traveling the world, you're becoming an influencer and you're doing well in life and your clients, your customers love doing business with you and your dreams are becoming a reality because now people are taking you serious as a young entrepreneur. And no, age has 
nothing to do with being taken serious. Nothing. I can look at a kid's eyes and know that kid is really determined about what they want to do in their lives. Eyes never lie. When you do business with somebody, they can tell from the eyes if it's droopy, if it's all over the place, and if you know exactly the subject you're speaking on, that brings confidence. So anyways, that's my message to you on how to be taken as a serious as a young entrepreneur. If you know another young entrepreneur, you want to share this content with them, go ahead and do so. If you got any questions, comment on the bottom. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, subscribe to the channel. We got a lot more great content on the channel they can find as well. Thanks for watching.